Did you ever know? I, I really never knew didn't. if you knew. No, I really didn't. Oh, this changes. I would have been a whole different person. In my book, so I, um, I was very close to my mother, and my father and I um, went in and out of having some friendships, especially I tried more as I went to college, but we never really clicked. And You call him Elliot. I call him Elliot. Well, now, because he did something so unthinkable to me, I, I would never call him dad again, really. So um, I, I get this job on a film with Brandon Maxwell, who is, I think that was his name. It was small, but I thought, my God, I'm making a film, this story. I can do this. I told my father on the phone, I got this audition, and I think I got this part, and I'd give him all this information. He was curious. And next thing I knew, they informed me that FedEx letters were going, uh, claiming I was a heroin addict. Coincidentally, I, I never was a heroin addict. No, you but, never tried it. And, and I never tried it. But you know, it was a real kind of poison pen letter about me claiming to be an agent, and this went on. They got like 11 in one day, 16 in another day, told me, and eventually, they, and they fired me before even shooting, and were lovely to me, but explained, we just don't know what's going on, the liability, like, I, we don't believe this, but are they gonna be in our, and, and people I, take that seriously, like that uh, kind and they of should, onslaught. But I thought, it wasn't signed by me, it was accusing me, and I didn't know where it was coming from. I had no idea where it was coming from, I thought maybe someone disliked me in high school, and this is happening, but who would know? So anyhow, later, time goes on, I'm getting more and more afraid, this is going on in my life, and then I hear from a detective, said, we know this is not you, this is like maybe almost a year later, still struggling, but someone has been writing letters to Drew Barrymore, many poison pen letters signed by Selma Blair. Oh the heartbreak. I mean, the fear, the horrible. And eventually, long story short, found out that it was my father, someone involved with my father. And he was letting this information get to her. And then when he found out it was her, and I said, I can't, you know, he chose her and didn't believe me. Why? Said, no, she's not doing this. You're, you're also ruining her life. You put a Mickey in her drink at Starbucks. I mean, just ridiculous stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in New York. I've never met her. But it was I didn't know what I would do. Like this was someone that was intent on doing this, and Why my father did he believed. Do it? I don't know. So he. So that was it, and he admitted at the end. I know what I did is wrong. I know it wasn't you, and we never had a real makeup. I mean, my whole adult life after that, once I found out it was him, I had to cut him out. Well, good news, it really didn't get to me. I really wanted oh, to wow. talk to you about the documentary, and it had nothing to do with mm -hmm. this. I didn't even know, and wow. then. I found out about the letters, then I received your book, and then I was like, okay, f this, I'm going after her. I have oh my to God, talk to I her. I love this. I, I want to heal this moment because it wasn't real for me on my side, nor would I ever doubt you right. and actually have been a total fan of yours <laughs> on the side, like admirer for many, many it's years. It's amazing the things we carry and what is a trigger for us to feel totally powerless. Because even though classic. I was aware I didn't do it, it's like always the fear. Anyone now trying to take away credibility because it's all I have is my truth. I am honest now. But Maybe what I have to, to say it. to the audience that might not know, you were my childhood like favorite because really? you were the girl. Well, that's why the letters went to you, I assume, because he knew what you meant to me. Really? It's not random. Oh, I totally thought it was random. Oh, I was like, no, oh, lucky this is me, the part no one's no one's made the clue and this is where I couldn't ever. Oh, this makes more sense. Okay. Okay. But no, thank you. You were the favorite and oh. I cannot tell you how many people when I was little was like, "You look like Drew Barrymore." And I was like, "You mean it?" And I I mean, it was such joy. It was such innocence joy of finding a kindred spirit through books or movies, yeah. you know, to look at. That's all. It was innocent and l wonderful. Talking about your book, about the experiences that you had because of drinking, I know I had them too. Thank you. And I'm talking about... That anyone, even with their own messed up mind, can do anything they want to you. And the decisions you make and the things you do are not what you would do no. if you weren't drunk. Did you tell and, yourself, I put myself here too? Yeah, and, and it's only now from my mother perspective when I hear how it sounds for other girls listening, and I would never want them to feel this. Yes, we have a personal responsibility to hope we can take care of ourselves, but unfortunately young people don't always know how, especially if their parental figures aren't exactly what you need for your, you know, 
to teach you safety. So, how did you find the bravery to put it in the book? Oh my God, I, I was not going to. No I was applauding. talking about it with Brittany, who's my dear friend and also my book agent. But I'm talking to her, and I started talking about this time in Florida, how much I was so excited to be invited along with the Kappa Alpha Thetas. I was not a sorority girl, I transferred late, and I'm on this trip with them, and they're all blonde and happy, and their families are checking in, and I'm just the wild child that's like driving them down there. And um, from Michigan and I sat down, I remember to kind of figure out where I was and get my vision back. It was like a day of drinking on a boat and and um, and um, I was attacked. It came on friendly, but it was attacked and there's two and I was so sick. I remember vomiting and and I wouldn't cry and I, I, I got back to the place and um, I had to just go on with the day and go on a scuba diving trip and knew I w wouldn't tell those girls because they would, then I would have to go to the hospital because they probably knew that that's the right thing and then what if I had a disease I didn't want them to know I'd have to find this out you know I thought I had AIDS I mean for a long time it was um and I and I said to her oh god that's so frightening I can't put that in the book people will think oh my god who is this person and she said but why 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 can't you because I think that might help people and I thought really are there other normal people thinking what's normal that that have let this happen that put themselves there but when i'm reading this not only am i in awe that you're saying it because everything you just said about the embarrassment i don't want to tell my friends I, they might judge me i put myself in this situation did i deserve it if there's a real aftermath i'd like to keep that to myself these are demons for me to own i did think about arthur and i thought about your son and how you could be a mother that teaches a boy. I pray. That that behavior is obviously nowhere near acceptable. I pray, I do teach him. He doesn't know those parts, he has, but he does know, and I did tell him that a teacher that I loved had trespassed against me. I wanna tell him that because it might happen to him. I mean, it might happen to all of us. and and a friend of his. I want to talk about your mom, speaking of critical. I feel like I would talk to myself probably the way that your mom did. What was it like to grow up with that voice? The, the things she said to you are hard to fathom. I know you guys had this in love. We were in love too though. How did you process when you were a kid when your mom would say, these critical things to you, oh Selma, you don't look good here. Or... It was her love language and I knew it. I knew even her insults were love, they were attention. And if she could get around to saying I was pretty, to believing I was pretty, I did not think I had any other talent. I thought maybe I could write a book like on a note card because she loved that. And But she did tell me you need to write, you need to write, I will edit, I will edit. And she's a very clear good editor and I wish I would have had the confidence to meet her with her talents and my talents and really create something, yeah, but I didn't have ages. it. I didn't have it in me um, to find it that early. I didn't totally, totally happily quit drinking until she was far removed oh, like from my life. <clears throat> so I didn't meet it in the way I wish I could know her. I don't know a thing about my mother. I don't know a thing. Really, I don't know As what's an adult. true. Yeah. I don't know her who she was. She would kept it so close to the vest. It was all meant to disarm people and keep them away. But it was the kind of thing when I was little and I said, Mommy, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write this. And maybe she had had too much wine after dinner and Elliot's across the way and she had she had said, Oh no, no, no. You are not you're not gonna act, you're not you're gonna we're gonna peddle your beauty, we'll peddle your face. And she was a woman who was a judge and all she believed was doing things on your own. But she stayed with a man she was very unhappy with because of that time and we still believe it perhaps that we are made better if a partner believes that we are lovable and that we are part of a group. And she stayed in this very unhappy marriage and I think it's partly why she was kind of mean and stayed out of the house and the house had no love. They did not, you know, she did not love him. She resented him. And um, even though that woman was so powerful to me, she was still afraid of living life as an independent woman. And could stigma. you see that as a kid? I could because I'd say even young, I'd say, Mom, leave, leave. Okay. And she'd say, I can't, he'll take you. He'll tell people I was in a mental hospital when I was young. 
He'll tell people, and she was wrongly put there, and all these things that I wound up repeating. She got a horrible virus, and somehow something happened, and she like regressed and couldn't talk, and sad, and and then I think the doctor said she was dying to her parents and made passes at like it was a very different time, like living there away from the family, and then she got put away because I think she was going to tell what happened to her, and then she got put away, and then she compartmentalized and said, "I better never show that again." And she just lived. Do you ever look at Arthur and say, I hope I could be the breaker? I of hope the I cycles. break this generational chain. And will it I be? I mean, too I have so many family him. secrets that I like need to tell you because I think you're so, like a sounding board that I haven't. So, what is like, sorry, where's my coffee? This is my annotated, okay. worn in, loved, dog eared coffee. Um, why do you? choose to put it all out there it's so brave i need it i love it how does one make the choice if someone's watching and mm -hmm. i always do this as if nobody's ever watching but if and when they are if they need a takeaway mm -hmm. of how to be brave to tell their truth do you have any advice all i can think is today I have joy like I've never known. Right now, today, with you. Everyone might not get to sit with one of their favorite childhood people and their favorite adult people. There's huge gifts we get, but I am. I never thought I would have it. And it will be fleeting. It might go, and today I could beat myself about something, but I won't. I stop and I say, you have a couple friends out there. Like, you really do, Selma. And, and, and you can breathe. Like, it's changed. Life will change. Life will change, and sometimes it will be so scary. I wish I had someone that came down and said when I was little, you will be okay. You will be okay, and you will be able to stop drinking. I mean, I knew even at seven, I don't think I'll ever be able to stop drinking. Like, that's the best thing. When Diana Ross and the Supremes comes on in the background and I have a rum and coke in me at the age of seven and a half and like a little bit of mascara and my older sisters are dancing and there's a man over there looking at little me like I'm something, those are great memories of my childhood. Like they were. I don't want people to fall into that trap that that, those moments of warmth are worth giving up. Giving up hope. I felt hope for the first time in those first sips. And so you chase it the whole night, you chase the hope and warmth. But I didn't look for my own. I had no idea I had hope. Until I saw my son and I love him more than anything. And I think, oh God, if he started drinking right now, or if he started doing the hurtful things to girls that people did to me, what would I do in loving to get him on track? Cause it's here right now. And I don't know, I just have to say breathe with me every night before bed. I can feel we're tense. It's like, okay, we just breathe. We love our kids the most to and we realize we want nothing to get in the way of that. Once again, my kids have made me find the high road. Yes. And I travel oh, on no. it with Will, Absolutely. with them. I've never had a reason to make sure I was okay. Yes. You want to be told everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm like we craved that growing mm -hmm. up. I will be the living example of everything's gonna that's be okay what I'm hoping. for them. That's what I'm hoping even for anyone that's a fan of yours, a fan of mine that r remembers the hard times. It's like, we're here. Like, I'm okay with death. I'm okay with living. I'm okay with living and like even, I heard it like Jamie Lee Curtis saying it on a podcast the other day, but she was like, die alive! And I was like, who <laughs> knew I would ever say that? Wait, Legally brought Blonde 3. I'm really I'm excited about it. Mindy I, Kaling. I mean, all amazing. I've been so kind of... Are you in if they... Um, yeah. Like, as if I'd say no. I you know. know, like, I will say yes. I will beg, maybe, yeah. secretly, quite... You know, like, I'm thrilled for a cameo. See, so you and one, I... I'm just want to be that. there. It's like, I'm not... Like, one, sure, who wouldn't love like a part? But yeah, I just want to be there. I want to enjoy it. I want to see this movie have this energy again because we, we, 
we need and love it too. You know, you we really do. You lightning in a bottle with that. And I love that you're like that. I'm the same way when people are like a Charlie's Angels 3 or, you know, when people act coy about right. stuff, I'm like. <gasps> I know. I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah. I would love to be on that set. Yeah. I would go visit any set Reese is doing. And if I even got a cameo. But like any of us to be back, you know, together, like it's so appreciated now. Like, just at this stage of my life, I might not have felt that 10 years ago. Like, I might not have understood where I was, and now it's like, oh, yeah, these are the gifts. These are just the nice reconnects, and if I can grow up and be any part of that, I'm thrilled. Speaking of two women, was it true that there was a moment in Legally Blonde that maybe Vivian mm -hmm. Kensington and Elle Woods were going to okay. sail off into the sunset? In my dreams, like, I didn't write that, but no, someone had mentioned it because someone erroneously um, thought so, but it did end originally. Uh, with us together and Vivian had blonde hair yes and so it was like oh I'm like blonde now too and I was like we're the lawyers club and we were friends we were obviously you know like best friend ending but of course the ending of her really moving and finding her strength you know Which without anyone and without changing anyone's thing is a reshoot that was clearly a reshoot because I know the wigs they, and I'm Luke oh my god Luke is your boyfriend yes oh my god this is my 90s self going nuts because I'm know. like oh wait <laughs> I mean, we were probably dating he was other super people at the cute. same time. He so was... cute. But in the reshoot, he looks totally different than he did in the oh, movie. Oh, totally. But yeah, the acting, I would love to come we back with this. We talked about Guide Beauty. I love that you're a fan of this. Of the show. We knew about this the whole time. We love Guide Beauty. This was, there's this woman, Terry's makeup artist, wonderful friend, and now, and she got Parkinson's, and her hands were really, you know, her body, the movements, even though I'm doing great with my MS and I'm in remission, I still do. And when it's time to take medicine again of this, I do get, yeah, <clears throat> like that. It's like a hiccup that comes up now that I'm focusing on it. It'll kind of come in. And it's different for everyone, whatever. So I get speech and movement things. A lot of times I, um, like, throw things and don't mean to. So this is, like, a good balance. Near my eye, it's a silicone nib, you know. So yeah. it's like I try and put eyeliner. I love, but it's like there'll be the wooden when I'm doing it myself and someone can't see what I'm doing. It's like... I'll poke my eye, I got a corneal abrasion, and then when I saw this, and I stopped wearing makeup, and it felt kind of crappy to not look in the mirror. I love that it's inclusive design, and it does not have to separate you as, oh, there's your, your ramp over there, and here's the way everyone else does it. It's like now we're having a lot of infrastructure rebuild and rethinking, and it's like, why can't we make the stages with like a ramp included? As we get older, like you are as bright as rain in my books. Thank I Thank you. All of as your are truth. you. I love you. And I try to find the bravery to tell it too. But you have forced your way into my life in this oh my force God. field, in this it's phoenix, this force. And I just, I not only like and love you I, I'm learning from you I'm in awe of you I'm admiring thank you I've felt these ways about you for so long you've been doing it all along but but thank you and it does mean so much I mean it means so much to even think with love now instead of fear